Benchmark, the voice of business. Presented by LMD. This edition of Benchmark, Rohit Kosla, Director of Operations at Tal Resorts and Hotels, gives us his take on the state of the tourism industry, in particular Sri Lanka's potential as a regional tourism hub. The LMD Nielsen Business Confidence Index signals a sudden spike. Nielsen Lanka's Managing Director Shaheen Kader analyzes the latest survey. And LMD columnist Samantha Amarasinghe wraps up this edition with her thoughts on the spiraling cost of food and inflation. That's the lineup for Benchmark. Back in the 12th century, Marco Polo called Sri Lanka the finest island in the whole world. And certainly the tourist of the 21st century seems to be endorsing it. They've been flocking our shores uh, since the guns fell silent three years ago. Now, the tourism industry is a major contributor to Sri Lanka's economy. And in fact, the government has set a target of 2.5 million tourists by the end of 2016. Now, lots of international publications, many international publications have called Sri Lanka one of the hottest destinations in the world. But do we have what it takes? The target may seem realistic, or is it? To share his views or to give his point of view is Rohit Khosla here today of the Taj Samudra. And in fact, he's the director of operations of Taj Hotels and Resorts. So welcome to Benchmark, Rohit. Good to have you share your views with us on generally tourism and city tourism, etc. You've been here two years now. So when you look at what we have and what you've seen thus far. How do you view the tourism industry here in Sri Lanka? First of all, uh, I'd like to thank you, Savitri, for having me on the show. Uh, it's, it's an honor for me to be able to represent our industry. Um, you know, like I tell a couple of my friends that for the first time in my life, I've been in the right place at the right time. After a 30-year after a war, uh, where the tourism industry was really suffering uh, um, in the last two years, have been a total turnaround. Uh, there is just so much of catching up to do now. I mean, there's 30 years of catching up to do. So the potential is tremendous, and there's a long way for us to go. And uh, I think we are on the right track. Uh, the trends, the recent trends are very encouraging. The number of uh, tourist arrivals are increasing. Uh, infrastructure development projects are taking off. And uh, the promotion of the country is becoming more and more. And we are getting into the news. And I think this is what is going to really make a difference for not only um, a few hoteliers like us, but the entire tourism industry. What do you think are Sri Lanka's strengths in actually transforming itself into a genuine tourism hub? Uh, what areas do you think we need to improve? I think let's look at what we have first. I think uh, in, uh, you know, uh, it's been captured very well by the Tourism Development Authority where we have the eight themes. and. Um, you know, we have uh, the beaches, we have the mountains, we have adventure, we have uh, uh, culture, we have food, um, uh, we have heritage, history. So there is, the, uh, in, in, in a small island, we have almost everything. And everything is within driving distance. So two or three hours, you are in a totally different place with a totally different experience. Um, the beaches of Sri Lanka are, are, are just amazingly beautiful. And, uh, and uh, often people compare uh, our closer neighbor Maldives and say that you know Maldives is a great beach destination tourism destination that's true okay Maldives are located very nicely very good beaches very good sea but then what else nothing much more than just that whereas Sri Lanka has much more to offer than the beaches there's there's a lot of art culture um, uh, heritage um, religious diversity uh, and I think this is something that we need to capitalize on what we need to do is to ensure that there's connectivity between these centers. Uh, as of now, uh, the government is working very hard to develop the infrastructure. We can see the, uh, the highway that's come up, that's collected Kanambo to Gaul. We definitely need a highway that connects us to Trincomalee in the east. We need something that connects us up north into Jaffna. And uh, so the road connectivity is something that is, is something the government is working on. People, you know, today in the fast-paced uh, world don't really have that one-month holiday. So I think that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing that we need to do is to promote our destination. I feel that um, um, it's a chicken and egg situation. Do you develop a destination? 
and then promote it or do you promote a destination and then allow it to develop? Now, well, I guess uh, here the, the argument will continue, but in my opinion, both need to go together. Uh, development promotion needs to go together and uh, we need to, you know, we, we are not the only girl on the beach as it was referred to sometime in the past in the press. Um, there are many others who are competing for the same business and are regional uh, uh, competitors in terms of Thailand or Malaysia or um, uh, Indonesia or India uh, are, are very strong in promoting the country. Now, Sri Lanka is in the process of signing a comprehensive economic partnership agreement with India, which in fact is an asymmetrical deal. And if I'm right, there are similar deals that India has signed with South Korea and Malaysia and also negotiating with a few other European countries. Now, India is one of our largest contributors to Sri Lanka's tourism industry. How would this partnership, if at all, benefit this relationship that's continuing? See, like you rightly said, India is the largest contributor and as far as the tourist arrivals is concerned and it is growing at a very fast pace. Uh, India, uh, Sri Lanka is very conveniently located for, for people who are staying in India. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's from, from New Delhi, it's a three-hour flight. From, from Mumbai, it's a two-and-a-half-hour flight. From Chennai, it's an hour flight. So it's, it's, a very, it's a destination that's easier to get to. And because of now the visa, uh, online visa, it's very easy to get in, uh, a visa and visit. It is, the government has enabled through the connectivity of Sri Lankan Airlines, as you can know, as you are aware that the largest uh, number of flights that fly out to India are by Sri Lankan Airlines. It's over, uh, over 100 uh, flights. And, and that just allows the connectivity between India and Sri Lanka. I think that connectivity needs to be enhanced. Uh, we also need to ensure that uh, we encourage more and more Indian domestic carriers to come in over here. We, we do know that uh, Jet Airways came in, we know Kingfisher came in, uh, um, uh, Spice Jet came in. But we need to, in, we need to encourage the seat capacity. Uh, that way we can benefit from India's, as a growing economy we can benefit. The second thing that we need to do with India is to, you know, uh, look at the, look at the large uh, domestic uh, tourism that exists in India and try and attract that into making it, converting it from domestic tourism to regional tourism, right? So we need to, we need to tap that market because the domestic tourism market in India is very large. We should not only look at the people who are outbound tourists, we should look at the people who are going around in India and how we can attract them to leave the shores of India and just travel a little distance and come to Sri Lanka. It's a huge market. The mice market is currently uh, contributing 10% to the tourism industry. And in fact, I think it needs to be doubled or even more uh, if we are to meet our targets. Uh, it has great potential for growth, but how do we focus on developing this and, and what may be actually hindering the growth in this sector? See, mice has got some very specific requirements. The, the first and the most important is connectivity, uh, number of seats. Uh, if you're coming in from Mumbai or if you're coming in from Delhi, let's give an example if you're talking about regional mice coming out of India, number of seats is very important. I mean, if, 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 if 300 people can't travel at the same time, then we're not really a mice destination. You know, if you're going for groups of you know, 100, 150, that's very small and niche mice. We have to talk about large. So one is getting the seat capacity between the major metros into, into Sri Lanka, into Colombo, higher. Number two is when they come over here is the getting the hotel rooms. So developing the hotel infrastructure. And number three is the convention facility. You know, BMICH unfortunately has been out of uh, action for a little while and we all are looking forward to it coming back. But you know, we don't need one BMICH, we, we need three BMICH. Uh, we are limited, you know, uh, we are limited by the banquet halls in five-star hotels. We really don't have a convention facility and, and banquet halls and five-star hotels can't really accommodate a thousand people. You know, so you want to have a thousand people doctor's conference, which happens in other parts of the world, can't happen here. We just can't do it. First, we can't get the people to fly in. Second, where do they stay? And, and third, where do they meet? And I must say that we need to add a little bit onto our entertainment and, you know, and, and experience part. You, you come to Colombo, beautiful city, very clean, very green, uh, heritage. But what do you do after 8 o'clock at night? Where are, the, where are the pubs? Where are the bars, karaoke bars? Where are the, where are the, uh, the great casinos? Where are the nightclubs? Um, where, the, where the shopping district? I mean, you know, where, you know we, have, we have a couple of great stores, 
but I mean, we don't have a one-stop shop. We can't go into a mall, a great mall. We have a couple of small malls. But you know, I'm talking about when you compare to Singapore, when you compare to Phuket, or Penang, or, or or Bangkok, we are lacking in that in that particular aspect. Even 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 Dubai is far ahead of us mm -hmm. in that sense. So for the my segment, we definitely need to also develop post conference after hours entertainment for people to be able to have that as an added attraction. We now take a quick break for commercials. On the other side, Rohit Koshla talks about tourism and sustainability and also the targets that we have set for our arrivals for this year and also for 2016. Is this achievable given that we are currently in a global economic crisis? Let's find out more after the break.